Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode 115 of the 9 to 5 Fitness Podcast. I'm very nervous because this is the first episode I'm really doing without Louis hosting with me. Previously, I've either done it with Louis or I've done it with Prime. Uh, I've always been in good hands, but this one, I'm solo, lone wolf, and a little bit nervous. So let me know how I went. Let me know in the comments. Please don't roast me too high, but I'm joined by two great friends, two of the 9 to 5 sponsored athletes. Uh, we have Kalani and uh, Hamish James on the podcast today. Hey guys. We'll be chatting all things bodybuilding, nutrition, all your mailbag questions. But guys, how are you? How do you sleep? Let's start with Hamish. Um, didn't sleep the best. I uh, was sleeping on a futon last night and woke up at 4 a.m. with my arm asleep. And it took me about 10 minutes for it to actually start working. It was a bit shocking. So how many hours sleep there? Uh, I watched that about five and a half. That's not great. It's not good. It wasn't very optimal. What about you, Kalani? Uh, not quite five and a half. Mm. I slept on a half inflated ribbed mattress. So... Mm. Well, inflatable mattress. It was not nice, but you know what? We got here. What kind of beds were they giving you in the Gold Coast? Like, what was the setup <laughs> there? Well, we, we were at a mate's apartment, which we were very thankful for. So, yeah. thank you to thank you, Marvin, Marvin Legend. Um, however, it was a cheap Kmart inflatable mattress, and he was on pretty much a uh, very, very hard well, bed. Well, a futon's pretty much like sleeping on a rock, isn't yeah, it? it was, yeah, it was. You'd yeah, be well, off on a rock, I'm glad you guys are here. I slept all right. Thanks for asking, guys. Slept oh, at the f- missus' place. You know, obviously not my very nice bed here with the optimal morning routine. But you know, we're here. We've a few coffees deep. You've had like 13 scoops pre-workout. Yeah. You? So we were supposed to go train. Yeah. Um, so I'm about two scoops of illegal pre-deep and a coffee. But well, the issue was you guys missed on your flight. Didn't? Mm. Do you want to talk about that at all? Yeah. Mm. So uh, we had a bit of a rough morning. It was a 4 a.m. wake up. Mm-hmm. Uh, we came from the Gold Coast, so we're coming down to Melbourne. We're both from Sydney, but uh, yeah, so we woke up 4 a.m., didn't really check our phones because we were a bit of a rush to the airport. We get there, uh, plenty of time, and we go up to the desk to check in, and it's not letting us. And uh, we asked the lady, the nice lady, who said, yeah, we can't check into our flight. And she goes, it's cancelled. Yeah. Um, bit of a shame. So they put us on a flight, Brisbane Airport. So we had to get a shuttle bus at 4.30 a.m., 4.30, so it's still dark, or it's is it pitch black? It's pitch black. It's pitch black. And how far is the drive from Coolangatta Airport to Yeah, Coolangatta. It's, well, it depends on the traffic, K. but yeah. it's about, what, an hour and a half? Hour and a, hour and a half? Yeah, depending on traffic, it was like 96k, and then well. today it took two hours. So not yeah. something you want to be doing no. at 4.30am, <laughs> definitely when you got a flight. Were you guys stressed at all? Was it, we were, we were a little bit upset. She, yeah. she stressed us out. Yeah. She's like, you're not going to make the flight. She's like, I can get you on the flight, but if you miss it, it's on you. And we're like, well, how's it on us? You can't yeah, say that. Wow. <laughs> but uh, we made it there with like an hour to spare because our bus driver was hitting and the absolute... And if we had the other flight, we would have yeah. arrived here like an hour ago. Yeah, okay. I, t- I swear flights are just an incredibly stressful Jetstar. thing and it's not <laughs> something... Jetstar. It's Jetstar. Wow. Jetstar. Yeah. It's... Imagine being told your flight's been cancelled at 4am. That was I great. Mean, yeah. Do you know why? And I jinxed canceled? it as well. Engine failure. Engine failure. Well, yeah. get a new plane, get a new engine. I, don't <laughs> I know, jinxed it, it as well because I was like, what should be delayed? And then it was <laughs> even worse. Yeah. So. <laughs> so have you guys actually left Sydney much or have you kind of been... You're, you're in Newcastle, yeah. but... Do you guys kind of travel a lot or do you stay there most of the time? So I, um, I lived in Scotland for a, nearly a year. Wow. Um, just after school, but then COVID hit. So I moved back because I was mm-hmm. going to set up shop there for a bit. But I moved to Newcastle for uni. I've been yep. there for three years now. And now just kind of back and forth from Sydney each week just for training and because yep. my coach is based there. Fantastic. Yeah. What about um, you? Well, I guess for me, I, I graduated school in 2019 mm-hmm. and I pretty much hit the peak of COVID when I just basically graduated. Yeah. So traveling is a... Yeah, it's definitely the last year it's picked up. I'm mm. t- trying to do it more. Hamish and I are trying to get around, hence this trip. But um, yeah, it's it's definitely been a bit you know slow just the last few years. Haven't been able to get out of Sydney, but it's good. We're trying to do it more now, trying to connect and get around. And uh, it's definitely in the plans for the next 12 months. So to now's the time, particularly with what we do with content yeah. and whatnot, if you can really get the business stuff going well then you can really do it from anywhere in the world and if yeah. you are traveling then your content does just get so much better it improves your perspective yeah, you are yeah. much more inspired um for those of you guys who are wondering who the hell are kalani and hamish <laughs> let's give him a little bit of an introduction they've both undergone some pretty serious comp prep comp prep for a bit of a bodybuilding noob like me we have kalani who's literally just got his pro card in bodybuilding you're in men's physique am i correct in correct, saying that yes men's physique. uh so i actually don't know what the difference is in the different categories but we will get to the specificity of that soon we got hamish you're in classic aren't yeah. you so big chris bumstead over here <laughs> and you're holding what the junior title for yeah. classic physique yeah the under 23 so that's pretty good um 
And yeah, if for people who don't know, Kalani, do you want to give a little bit of an introduction to yourself? Yeah, sure. So my name's Kalani. Um, I'm big into, I guess, the fitness content creation at the moment. So obviously, like you just said, we do bodybuilding. So that's kind of my main drive right now, but I'm mixing it with a lot of lifestyle stuff. But yeah, basically I'm just 21 years old and I've just gone into the bodybuilding world in the last six months and I absolutely froth it. It's so good. Um, I love it. And that's pretty much where we're kind of going in life is just the gym and bodybuilding content hamish is he'll explain he's a little bit more into the uh hybrid stuff but mm. i'm pretty much just your typical gym bro so not typical though potentially best back in what the southern hemisphere the i'll world. let you claim yeah, so i mean i mean me, i mean it's the facts though isn't it who has a better back than kalani yeah, just ask all the girls on the TikTok. <laughs> yeah exactly right yeah, it's and definitely a selling point but yeah what you do know. you have the best in the world of hamish Shreds. what are you bringing to the table here not much. I got. I can. I can do a vacuum. I think he's literally yeah. the leanest man in the world. He's. He's he, like this man. He lean, holds yeah. stage ready, like leanness, year round. It's yeah. absolutely insane. Yeah. So, do you want to give people a little bit sure. of an introduction? I kind of fell into bodybuilding. Like, I wasn't meant to be doing much of it. I was mostly focused on triathlons and rowing. Yeah. But um, kind of fell in love with it. Like the aspect of starting at a pretty high body fat and then working your way down to a physique which is kind of seen as un unattainable for a lot of natural guys and yeah just been doing it three shows now and fell fall in love with it like yeah just seeing what you're capable of and having fun with it meeting cool people and talk us through like the because obviously you do a bit more hybrid stuff mm. with the triathlons and whatnot how do you find balancing that what got you into it was it sport growing up in school yeah. or um so i played rugby all the way through school like it was just i was never like like top grade yeah i was just a bit of fun but i always wanted to be an athlete like mm. always but the biggest drawback for me was that i've never really had the time to invest all my time into training until school finished yeah and when i got given a uni assignment to see it was a discovery so you had to choose something to do and then work towards a goal and my goal was four sports try them for the first time bodybuilding powerlifting rowing and triathlons and all of a sudden tr training for different sports all at once it kind of worked and because I had all this free time and I'd, I worked night shifts, it was just so much fun. Yeah. But bodybuilding, there's something about it. Really? So you prefer bodybuilding out of anything that you've tried? I think the best thing about bodybuilding is, uh, for me at least, is just the change is so cool to see. Mm -hmm. Every day, your physique will change, especially getting closer to comp. And it's it can be rewarding and it can also be negative because as you come away from comp, your physique deteriorates. Yeah. It, it's really fun. What do you think about those salty MFs out there that say bodybuilding is not a sport, bodybuilders aren't athletes? Because um, like you, you could, in the technical sense, you say, yeah. you know, athletes, someone who, who can run a mile in this, you know, they're throwing balls and kicking balls. I say, I say try it. Yeah. Try it and see how deep into prep you get. Because if you're not committed, you won't make it. And it's, yeah, it's sure. It's not like your typical sport where you're kind of like, you know, yeah. cardio running around takes a lot of skill in, you know, it takes skill in a different sense. Yeah. And it's not just physical, it's very mental. So prep is, that's the one thing you'll learn so much about yourself because it absolutely tears you down. Yeah. Um, but that's why we love it because it's, you know, the hardest parts of it make the end result so rewarding. Yeah. Mm. And like, seriously, like you get to the end of it and no matter how you do, you, you get so emotional after because it's over and it's mm. the hardest parts that you miss. So I think anyone that's like, oh, bodybuilding this body, you know, the bodybuilders are so shallow and it's not really sport. It's like, yeah, I see why you say that because you kind of see the end result you see these guys who are posing and they're like look how good i look i'm all tanned up on stage but like the process to get there is not 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 everyone can do it yeah okay yeah. do you more or less agree with that yeah um i think trying to pose on stage as well oh. it, the art behind it and then also the ability to outshine your competitors mm. it's almost like dancing or something is, yeah, yeah it's a routine mm. it's like, genuinely like an art form in a sense because it's you have to learn how to move your body in a way which is um, shows off your physique the best you can. Yeah. And that's not easy. And you have to actually figure that out over time. And so, I mean, you consider a ballet dancer to be an athlete. So yeah. like, why would exactly. you consider but a I bodybuilder? Think posing, there's a lot that goes into it. Like for myself, I was posing for 25 minutes every single day for 17 weeks straight. Yeah. And I didn't even think I was the best poser on stage, but I got myself to a point which was half decent. And then you have guys who are just like, they will work at there. I mean, for men's physique, posing isn't really the center. Like, you know, it's not the most important thing you need, but for classic guys and bodybuilders, 
their posing routines are very tough and they have to put so much work into their routines yeah. and to get it right that's what uh for this topic here of like bodybuilding for someone like me i was asking you guys in the group chat like can you actually explain to me what the difference are in categories i think i know a little bit more since you guys explained it to me but you basically have open which is like the real big dogs that's like your big rammies and whatnot yeah. then you have classic which is like kind of bringing back that golden era like that's what chris bumstead's in and Shame, whatnot yeah. that obviously arnold was in opens but that's kind of bringing back yeah. that arnold look right then you have men's physique which is like you aesthetics. wear the board shorts like yeah. aesthetics jeff side looking yeah. type thing am i missing mm. any other categories in the natural one there's men's fitness which is just like a the more attainable model look it's it's like what you would see if you walked on the beach and you saw someone that was slightly above average and you're like that's a good physique yeah but it's not really about size how is that different to men's physique though because i would think men's physique is like that beach lean yeah. you know like healthy looking guy but not necessarily like super juiced up the thing yeah the, i guess the thing with men's physique is like whether you think it or not you actually have to be very big to do well yeah um some men's physique guys especially once you go into ifbb they're bigger than the classic guys um and the biggest difference is men's physique basically you don't show your legs yeah which is you know decent legs, for some of us but are legs a strong point for you or uh they can be they I've, were actually i've seen photos your quads are insane they were at one point i i stopped training them a couple of weeks out from show just because it legs drains you and when you're on prep it's the last thing you really feel like doing but i mean i think it still looks good to be on stage in shorts with your quads bursting, bursting out of your shorts <laughs> i think it still looks great but, but you, you still need to have like good carbs don't you for men's uh, it's not essential but i think it helps yeah. just whether they, whether <laughs> yeah whether the judges say it or not i think having good legs and good calves definitely makes your physique mm. look better and you get that x taper as well yeah yeah, yeah. i think mm. especially like comparing because i did men's physique for a couple of comps and just learning that the, there are everyone's body's different and everyone's body's suited to different start of categories especially with naturals because some guys really do struggle to put on size. So for someone our age, it would be really hard to get to that open level yeah. because mm. it is such a entry just to be that big. And you mm. have like, yeah, like for a lot of people, even with uh, performance enhancing yeah. drugs, like they can't even get to that size, which mm. is, what's that guy's name? Uh, he's like called the freak or something. Oh, the mutant. Like, the mutant. Um, what's his name? Uh, right, right, he just right. he looks yeah, like Nick a Walker. Yeah. Nick, Nick Walker. Walker. Yeah, Nick Walker. And it's like people like yeah, he just looks like that because he's done this many steroids. But apparently, like to even like get to his size with mm. everything, like all the secret supplements he's got going on, yeah. like that is just like insane genetics. Yeah, mm. I guess the thing is, you walk into a gym and I don't think people realize there's so many people on juice mm. and they don't look like it. Mm. Like you have to take juice. And to be big and be able to compete in this IFBB level or be a, like a pro bodybuilder, you don't just take juice. You have to take juice, be a good responder to it, yeah. eat a shit ton of food, yeah. train your ass off. And literally, you ha like there's so many variables that go into it. Not anyone, yeah. like I said earlier, not anyone can just do it. It's like what Derek says. And that's what I consider because I chat to like some of my friends who are in that kind of scene. I'm like, oh, I wonder what I would look like mm. on on gear and they're like well why wonder come to the dark side <laughs> i'm like oh i don't know about that and it's like i've heard derek say like you can be a natty and be like a hyper responder yeah, yeah. you know natural things like yeah. progressive overload and a good recovery system and like creatine or something yeah. like that yeah. and it's then perhaps if i got on gear would i be a subpar responder and all of a sudden not look that much better but yeah i guess I you never know until you try yeah exactly and i know people that have you know they look great naturally they hop on gear and it ruins their physique mm. well like, they just get gyno yeah, and acne exactly <laughs> they don't really reap any benefits from it if anything it actually takes away from their physique yeah. or mm. you know it, it happens and so that's a gamble you take i guess yeah have you guys ever been tempted to go to the dark side uh never until i won my pro card yeah. because that kind of wasn't an expectation for me like i went into it obviously you go in and you want to win yeah like you're not going there to come last but getting my pro card at my age that i am and in my second show ever was like mm. that was like a dream yeah. and i achieved that and that was uh a shock to me and then after i was like well i've kind of completed the campaign of natty bodybuilding like i don't yeah. know where to take it from here like i can do the pro shows but you know i love bodybuilding i want to keep doing it um so I guess it's now a question of like, do I take it to that next level? Right now, it's not in the conversation. Mm. I think I have a lot left in me naturally and I enjoy training naturally because it's really, I guess it feels great to achieve certain things naturally and you know you're doing it naturally. But again, I think out of any time in my life, it's now where I'm definitely 
thinking of it. Yeah. Um, you definitely see a lot of uh, first time competitors do natural comps. They do it once and then they immediately jump on juice because they want to see what they can achieve mm. in that space. But at the same time, when we're this young, there's no real point completely ruining our hormones for the rest of our life because it's a, it is such a big commitment just mm. to jump on. Yeah. And if you say you in five years, you don't want to be doing this. Mm. You've completely and utterly put yourself in a pigeonhole and you have to stick with it it is very true because you can just irreversibly damage like your endocrine system there and if you don't have like a proper sports doctor who really knows what they're doing it is just like you know yeah. like you're shooting blanks i think yeah. that's the thing with me as well I, until i really understand like endocrinology and pharmacology mm. i don't think i could ever take things because i'm genuinely scared like yeah. i don't <laughs> like i feel like i would like pin too much or it's pretty it interesting like listening to like a video of Derek or something and he's yeah. got like all these words with like 26 syllables it, and yeah. it's like yeah I understand oh, that it man. Scares yeah, me, freaking... man it turns me off it if anything because <laughs> yeah. it's like you sit there and you look at it and you're like I don't get it <laughs> I also <laughs> no. I also hate needles like I hate mm. getting a blood test I couldn't imagine jabbing my glute yeah. freaking yeah <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you do it once or twice and you would eventually just yeah like, you get, get used to it get used to it yeah I mean, yeah. I don't you, know. You have to buy a lot of needles. Yeah. Like, it be consistently, oh, yeah. like, expensive. Yeah. Have you seen that TikTok? It's like the guy, he's got, like, his girlfriend over there, and then she yells out, and she's like, Do you have diabetes? And it's like, Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine doing that in front of your missus. Yeah. Oh, she, she said she'd leave me if I did it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, I would hope I meet a girl that pins me. Yeah. She just gets it there. Well, that, that can be taken in the wrong context, but. <laughs> yeah. Um, whatever you're into, <laughs> mate. Yeah. So, yeah, bodybuilding, like mental health. How have your guys' relationships been with mental health through bodybuilding? Because I know they're kind of inversely related. The better you get at bodybuilding and the leaner you get, kind of the more your mental health deteriorates. Is that just like happens for everyone? Are there any anomalies? Like, what are your guys' relationships with it? Um, I think, especially, it's person to person it mm -hmm. it varies but um from my experience when you have a goal such as bodybuilding and putting your body to the extent that is unhealthy it's going to put a strain on not only yourself and your mental health but the people around you you're going to be very tired you're going to be very angry you're going to be irritable and as a result you push away the people closest to you mm -hmm. in order to achieve a goal and it can hurt sometimes because you see your friends stop inviting you to things you stop going out you yeah. you find yourself more and more at home eating your meals by yourself and just training. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, if you don't go all out for a goal and you don't find out what you're capable of, it's not really just working. taking the piss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think? I know you've got quite a close relationship with your followers and your kind of relationship with mental health. Mm -hmm. What are your viewpoints? Yeah, well, on? I guess firstly, I think Hamish's point on like a big thing with it is you tend to feel super lonely in prep. Mm -hmm. Not just prep, but also if you live the life of bodybuilding and like you're pretty hardcore in it and you don't really go out all too much or if you do go out it's on a rare occasion you definitely especially in um australian culture people tend to turn you away yeah. and they start pushing you out and they're like oh he's not interested or they assume that you wouldn't be interested because he's like oh he's into his health and doesn't drink and doesn't do this or and that can definitely take a toll i've definitely been through that at points um i'm lucky i have some great friends that understand the kind of world of bodybuilding somewhat and they get they get it yeah but uh it definitely can happen but yeah i guess in terms of my mental health with lifting uh, I didn't get into lifting for any sort of, you know, I was insecure at some, like to an extent, cause I was quite a skinny kid. I was 60 kilos and mm. I definitely got into it. And then I think it was only the last year that it really started helping with my mental health uh, just cause I got really sick and yeah. I lost a bunch of weight. And that was the first time since I started lifting that I saw a big decrease in my physique and my yeah. health. And that was when my kind of mental health really took a toll. But yeah. At the end of the day, uh, once I got back into lifting, like lifting completely fixes my head. What, um, like what kind of things did you go through? What were you feeling through like your training and whatnot in regards to mental health? Yeah. Uh, so January last year, I got really sick. Mm -hmm. uh, or well, it was the very end of December. And in March, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. Yep. So up until March, I pretty much didn't know what was wrong with me. So I wasn't eating. I, well, I couldn't eat couldn't leave the house pretty much couldn't get out of bed uh couldn't see a specialist and i got super sick basically couldn't train and that was the first time in about two years at this point that my love of training completely left me and i kind of realized that without training i really have a hole in my mental health and that was really tough so it took me a bit to kind of i really had to find myself 
Um, yeah, I can imagine it's like when you're an athlete and you get like a, a really bad injury, like an ACL or something, and sure. this has been like your life the entire time and you have almost like an identity crisis. Like, Pretty well So is an autoimmune disease, is that like where your immune system's attacking itself and you're just repeatedly getting sick or? Yep, so I had Crohn's disease, yep. but I have Crohn's disease and that's basically a GI tract. So, you know, like your, your bowel movements, your stomach, mm. it's like acid reflux, that kind of thing. So it's basically... When it, when it peaks or when it flares up, it's just like really tough to kind of, you know, it, it attacks like your energy levels and all that stuff. And it's just, it's, it's not fun. It's really not fun. It's not the greatest yeah. thing to go through, but. I mean, it, like you seem to be doing, managing it pretty well now. I yeah, think. I mean, it's been over, it's almost a year and a half now. So yeah. I like to think I'm doing well. It definitely has its moments, yeah. but like with anything in life, you just have to fight through it, I guess. And well, I think Mr. Beast has Crohn's disease as well. Yeah. So. Sebum, oh, Sebum yeah. got diagnosed with an autoimmune disease a couple of weeks out from his comp. Wow. Well, yeah. yeah. So it just proves that extremely successful people apparently have autoimmune <laughs> diseases. So Yeah, well, I'm not quite successful yet, yeah. but we'll see. No, nah, yeah. but with your Crohn's, um, especially like as you're coming into your first competition, how much did that affect you that you had to pull out, especially with COVID as well? For my first comp, you yeah. said? Yeah. Um, I was pretty nervous. I was very nervous when it came to dieting um i was more nervous for actually a post-show just because once you re-enter all these sugary foods and stuff your body can like really flare up and have issues yeah. with that yeah. i was very lucky i didn't have anything too bad happen um there was points in prep where my energy levels which i guess was a mix of dieting and my autoimmune disease were completely in the toilet mm. um and it's really hard so for anyone that doesn't know when you're in prep your hormones are completely out of whack you lose your sex drive you, your energy levels your sleep gets deteriorated and it's really scary at some points um so i think there was one or two points in that first prep where i was freaking out because i was like i think something's gonna flare up but i was pretty lucky it yeah. tamed itself throughout mm. so right, i want to continue the conversation on both of your journeys you winning your pro card and you know the differences in how long your preps took but uh you know as the viewers know, we have to keep a roof over our head. So we are hitting you with the NTF plug. And I think you had a question. How do you, it, one of you, how do you join the NTF team? Like, how did you get involved with the NTF team? Do you know what the question was? Um, yeah, I basically, I basically yeah. got asked how Hamish and I started working with NTF. And because I guess a lot of people, especially young guys who lift and train, mm -hmm. they, they see NTF as a brand, which is, you know, this young culture and it's like growing rapidly and they're going well all these guys well, a few of these guys are now part of the team like how the, how the hell do i get on the team like yeah i suppose it's know? not like i mean you guys would notice it too it's not like so hardcore or like no. you need to post this you need to get this many sales i just want it to be almost like a community of yeah. young uh like content creators in different like kind of diverse niches mm -hmm. like obviously your bodybuilding athlete stuff we got people doing completely different yeah. stuff yeah. uh and i just wanted to create like a bit more of a networking community because i don't think that's really been done in australia and i think we do a really good job of just isolating ourselves and i think it's fantastic like i don't know whether it was ntf that brought you guys together or you were friends before it but there's little like almost communities in the ntf team of yeah. people training together which yeah. i think is fantastic and you know the world of content creation can be a pretty lonely place so i think like our group chat we're always it's sick. saying yeah. like this is like the contract i've got here this is the sponsorship <laughs> opportunity yeah it, well it's very easy in the social media world to feel like a number yeah. it's very very easy for a brand to reach out and kind of be like hey we love your content here's what you're worth mm. to us post a reel for us see you later yeah, exactly. and it's and you can look at it and be like woohoo money but <laughs> you know at the end of the day you want to feel valued yeah, yeah. and i think that's the best thing like i can confidently say i think everyone in the ntf team with the athletes right now aren't in it because we get some clothes and yeah. you know we get this and that it's like or it's a good opportunity it's because like we genuinely enjoy being you know friends with everyone and mm. like I've, i'm talking to most of the guys in the ntf team now on a regular daily basis yeah. just about life and it's yeah. so good because in australia not too many people are doing fitness social media and if they are it's tends to be hard to kind of find that community um so to talk to guys like that it's you know it's reassuring it, is. it feels and good I'm, i still feel really new to this whole fitness content stuff and i found it really lonely to start with because i couldn't relate to any of my friends i couldn't relate to any of the people in my life about what i was doing mm. and then all of a sudden i had you guys reaching out to me and i was like oh my god i'm not the only one 
Yeah. And then two weeks out from one of our shows, he's like, come to Sydney, we'll train. That's it was just so a, it was through NTF that yeah, you guys... Yeah, fully through yeah. NTF. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it was just so like refreshing to talk to him and be going through similar stuff, mm. like in terms of like mental health and sports prep, uh, dealing with brands for the first time, mm. understanding your value because... At the end of the day, we are so new to this. We don't know what we're Yeah, and I've yeah. kind of, I'm probably a few years ahead from you guys and having gone through a whole bunch mm. more contracts mm. and, you know, brand issues and whatnot, I can almost like provide a bit of advice yeah. to everyone in the team. And like quite often we'll have someone say, hey guys, this brand approached me. What do you reckon of this contract? Mm. I'll say, that's fucking shit. Yeah. <laughs> or <laughs> whatever. Yeah, which is good because, you know, like Hamish said, we're both very, very new to this and we get, yeah, as you do, you get reached out by play, like companies and things and, we have no idea what we're worth and yeah. you're trying to figure it out a lot of people get um i guess what's the word kind of exposed or yeah. you know exploited, taken yeah. advantage of exploited yeah. at the beginning of their social media career or well, through their social media career because they just don't really know what they're worth so it's yeah. good to have that kind of advice from like people that are, i would consider you know a bit more veterans in this like field mm. and um you it's know, also nice to meet like-minded people 100%. and just being able to chat about similar stuff. and i think the best thing is like i always looked at you and Louis, yeah, uh, yeah. with your content, the way you guys came up, and I was always so jealous because I was like, I just yeah. want someone that, you know, I can talk to about this stuff, yeah. or that I can grow with. Yeah. And the thing with Hamish and I, I think why we get along so well is because we're at the exact same level. Yeah. We kind of started this around the same time, and we both know what goals we want. We're super motivated. We just competed yeah. on literally the same weekend. Mm -hmm. um, so it's good to be, you know, if I have uh, like advice for anyone wanting to do this, is try to reach out to even one person that's in the same kind of state of you know social media or life as you and communicate with each other you know so you don't feel so alone because mm. it's very easy in this social media game to get psyched out and just yeah. stop posting because you're like well uh, you know no one no one likes my stuff or yeah. this or that and yeah. i don't want to do this anymore because i'm shy people are going to make fun of me but when you have someone with you that's doing it as well you learn that like you don't really care what people say because you have someone oh, there that's also and it's that whole thing of like iron sharpens iron that's why we have this house you yeah. know we got mm. prime train here we got louis and we're all helping each other and you know when you see the other person making content it's like it inspires you you know it's not like a ever a jealousy thing of no, they've yeah. done better than me and this is like how do like can i ask them for some advice can yeah. they help me i'll yeah. send a video to louis or something i'll say like, can you pull this apart i sat i sat down at our hotel or our place that we were staying in gold coast mm. with hamish and he sits down and he you know finishes the one of the best edits for a reel yeah. i've ever seen in about 45 minutes and i was sitting there going shit, I got to edit a video now and yeah. I started just pumping one out as well because just being next to someone that does it, it's so motivating. It's awesome. Well, you, yeah. your product, your environment, if you're around the right people, it's yeah. a great time. Yeah. I've, I've always been curious that what's it like living in a house like this with all content creators pushing you to be your best? Yeah, well, it's full on. Like, I'm not going to lie, like it's a full on house, but we knew that it was yeah. going to be full on. We didn't go in thinking it was going to be a regular share house with people vaping and drinking beers on a tuesday afternoon you know yeah. we knew it was going to be this is the years we're going to try to make it so yeah. like it's a lot of energy you know there's some loud music being playing a couple grunts coming from the gym you know sometimes we clash sometimes we get into arguments and whatnot but i think for the most part this is the environment we really need to be in because it's not going to be like this forever one day we'll all probably have wives and kids and happy families but these are the years we really want to make like establish ourselves so it's full on uh but i think we wouldn't want anything else mm. uh but going back to like how you guys got involved with nine to five yeah just like really reaching out i can't tell you how many applications we've had from mm. young up-and-comers being like how can i join the ntf team which is amazing um we're almost building like a second tier now we got our sponsored athlete team and uh, we're going to make like an affiliate thing for kind of smaller creators uh, which is going to be like a trial where they can really prove themselves to see if they can generate sales and if they do reach like a certain amount then they can get upgraded to the sponsored athlete team uh, but what we are really looking for is people with like their own communities and high levels of social media engagement i don't care if you got like hella followers like 200k on tiktok like to be honest it doesn't mean anything i want to know if you've got your own little community so i think you and kalani have like very different communities yeah. and like that is so so valuable just having like a tight-knit bunch of people you essentially like look up to you and that is really what we're looking that could be five thousand followers on instagram but if you're like highly engaging mm -hmm. like people actually you know mess with your content then yeah. that is a really good sign to us if you got like 200 followers and probably just grind a little bit hard i remember this guy scott scott mm -hmm. herman or whatever he messaged me at like 200 followers being like hey gab 
what do I need to join the team? And I was like, oh, like this is what we're looking for. We need mm-hmm. like 5,000 followers and then like average of 1,000 likes per post. And then he, he ended up getting a few reels go viral and got like mm-hmm. 7K. I said like, oh, we're going to give you like a trial run, see how you go. Yeah. So keep grinding guys. Um, and you know, I want to put like the young up and comers on and send you down some dope clothes. Yeah, yeah for sure. Awesome. And I think um, with the, going back to the community thing, when you're trying to build up a following and stuff, like, yeah, the number's cool. But you quickly learn, you hit a following and you're just like, okay, now that's the new norm. Oh. But nothing is better when you're creating content than when you get a message saying like, you inspired me mm. or, you know, this is kind of like got me into the gym Definitely. or got me doing this and that. And that means so much more than a number on your screen ever will. There's so many people with like a big number with absolutely dead followings yeah. and no, yeah. per- they're literally like a robot and it's like it's no cool. one like like they're having no impact whatsoever yeah. and that might just be a reason for why i've only got like 30k on instagram yeah, I'd take, I, I always say the same thing i'd rather have 10 15 20k on instagram with 70 80 percent engagement mm. and people actually enjoy my stuff than have 100 to a million followers and i get about 100 likes per Brad photo no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know no one cares about my stuff because yeah. it's yeah. like what what the number doesn't matter if they don't you know yeah. care about you I really like um, seeing the same people commenting every mm. time yeah. and like getting to know them, getting to know some of the people. And then when you go out in public and people come up to you and be like, they're like, I saw this video and I loved it and it's fun yeah. to do this. It's like, for me, it's really cool because I've never experienced anything like yeah. it in my life. The and biggest one I've had is like people coming up on the street and saying, like I've had a few really full on ones, like people saying I've stopped them from killing themselves. Yeah. And it's like, how the fuck is me commentating an avocado toast video <laughs> stopping you from doing something yeah, awful yeah. but like that is makes me almost tear up in person like For it's sure. incredible and i've only had like i've been pretty open about my mental health and yeah. my struggles on social media and i'm very i don't shy away from talking about it because i think it's a very niche topic that needs to be talked about more mm-hmm. and i think a lot of people think it's scary to be like oh i go to therapy i go see a psychologist Especially and guys I, exactly and i don't i understand if people don't want to talk about their experiences but i'm very open with it because i know when i was going through a t- like tough time the only thing I wanted to, I looked out, I, I would look up on YouTube, bodybuilders who have depression. And it's yeah. like, I just wanted to see all like big influence. I wanted to see someone who's established, be honest and say, hey, I also struggle. Yeah. So I'm very honest with it because I know when I am honest with it, I get a lot of messages from people being like, I'm so happy you talked about this. And then I'll have a chat to them and it ends up being, yeah, I kind of am holding on to you know life right now because of people like you or when you talk about things because it makes me feel human. It makes me feel like, I'm, yeah. you know, my mental health is justified, and that is like, that is huge. Like, That's why that I love is, doing like those collab posts between yeah, nine to five yeah. and you guys because you do have such like impactful content. It's mm. not just posing for a shot and looking muscular. Yeah. Like you actually have depth behind your content, which is an, another really big reason why we wanted you guys involved with the team. And yeah, I think that just trumps. Look like obviously you guys look good as well, but having like. A purpose behind your content is yeah. so important and i i don't think i'm near the stage of being able to call myself an influencer and i i'm not a big fan of that word because i think content yeah, creation yeah. is a more important aspect but in the sense of social media and influencing it is influencing so it's like you know you got to have that influence on people to you know yeah you have an impact on their life otherwise there's not much value to it so. exactly right so going back to the long-winded question of like the NTF team and everything. Yes, it's like we kind of want to create like a young LA of Australia, but it's more than that. It's more like a just a, a community of people supporting each other and as like a byproduct, you know, we want to create some pretty dope clothing, send it out to you guys, create a few sales, make a successful company, hopefully grow it a bunch. And I think the money definitely comes secondary when you have like solid values behind it. Kalani, I want to ask you, how do you get your pro card in bodybuilding? Uh, so I got my pro card through a federation called ICN. So that's I Compete Natural. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, it's probably the biggest natural in bodybuilding Australia. federation in Australia. Um, really big. It yeah. has grown crazy over the last few years. And um, so there's kind of these local shows which you usually compete where well, you have to pretty much compete in first. And then there's national shows. And yeah. the national shows, people fly in, you represent your state. So when they call you out, it's like wow. number 52, Kalani from New South Wales or whatever. Yeah. So they're the big shows. And you kind of only really go to those if you 
are gunning for that first place or gunning for that pro card. Otherwise, it's an investment. It's yeah. an investment. A lot of people fly in. And a lot of people spend a lot of money on it. Um, and bodybuilding is not cheap. It is not cheap. Mm. Uh, and it only, gets, it only gets more expensive the deeper you go into Especially it. Especially when you spend $10,000 a month on human growth hormone. Like <laughs> yeah, so IFBB is not too cheap. Yeah, and coaching no. itself. Coaching itself is insane. Yeah. So, um, so you won your local show? Yeah, so I went into then- a Sydney show. It was the local show. It was my first ever... Um, competition I ended up winning my opens class yeah um, which is basically like the the opens men's level like that's the hardest yeah. and then you go into the overall which is the winner of the two open classes um, well wow. so which I didn't take out the guy who I versed looked insane yeah um, but I won my opens class and I said to myself if I win my opens class I'll consider doing nationals which was yeah. two and a half three weeks later so that um, then qualified you for nationals uh, yeah so if you compete in a local show you can go to nationals okay. but, but obviously that was like a good sign that you've done well yeah so that would be a worthwhile investment. that's basically saying like hey you can actually do this and mm-hmm. you know that just the, yeah it gave me that mindset to be like okay maybe i can actually go for this pro card because that was my that is my dream for bodybuilding yeah or i guess it was so that was my like absolute life goal yep. i was expecting to get that in like five six years and um so i went to nationals three weeks later uh you have your divisions like your age division mm. you have uh you know novice which is like if you, it's your first year competing but once you win an opens class you can only go into the open again for yep. the nationals so i did the open and um there was two classes there was a tall class short class i was in the short class um and i took it out which mm. gives you your pro cards you have to come first in your opens class and that's basically so to get your pro card it's local show win your opens class or compete in the local show compete in the national show and win your opens class and that gets you your pro card and so they only give away two pro cards one to the short class one to the tall class sometimes only one if there's only one class so it depends so you just have to win an opens class which is yeah well do you think i should do a show one day i think you should yeah like the fun part about it you don't have to be the guy you think you're gonna win like you can just do it for the fun of it. Yeah, I want to win though. Yeah, no, you're yeah. winning. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, we're, have yeah. You boys we're getting you yeah. into a show. You're yeah. winning. But you have the you have the base for it. Like yeah. you've trained yeah. for years. You've built up the foundation of your strength, and it'd be a fun experience. Yeah, uh, learn yeah. more about yourself in those sixteen weeks. That's the thing. You do else. a show, and you're like, you come out of it like, wow, I'm a different person. Yeah. I know so. I you know motivation like no other. Yeah. What are uh, what category am I going in? I'm I'm thinking classic. Yeah. Get get you doing some like. You know, opens i'd have to be on trembolone sandwiches for that no. yeah well yeah maybe <laughs> yeah. classic uh, is more like sea bum type yeah. shit big yeah. legs would probably benefit me big legs for sure men's physique the big legs wouldn't benefit me that much you might not fit into the shorts yeah, yeah. bursting yeah. through the seams yeah yeah it depends you and might then, have to get some oversized billabong yeah. dad shorts <laughs> exactly so mm. we're doing we're doing classic physique mm, and yep. how many weeks prep 20 weeks prep 16 weeks oh, 32 really dep- depends on how lean you want to get and how quickly mm. like the way i did it because i i did a show last year just to see how I, if i liked it and it, that took me 12 weeks to get to about four percent body fat four percent and yeah, yeah it, was a bit, it was a bit it was really unhealthy like after that i i got cellulitis was in hospital for a bit Fuck. please talk about your like bath the night before and all that sh- like this man oh, was yeah. in his on his deathbed wow. I, the whole peak week i cut out carbs for three days so I lost four we- four kilos in a week. Just cut out water, and it was the leanest I've ever been. But the day on stage, I nearly died. Like pretty much, I was wow. I was posing and nearly f- collapsing. But the next day, I went to Melbourne, ate all this food, tried to be a normal human, and my body just shut down. My oh, immune system yeah. was in the drink, yeah. and all my legs just got covered in these ingrown hairs from shaving my leg. And they all oh. got super infected. Oh my yeah. god! And as a result, I've had cellulitis that got so bad they were like we might have to amputate oh my god (laughs) it was was a good experience but the best thing that came out of that is that it taught me you don't need to cut out water or carbs to get that lean that was ridiculously stupid okay yeah so at least when i do my prep i'll learn from your guys mistakes already so i won't have to go through that it's different for each person i have to cut out water and carbs it's my body type i'm a sponge so i soak things in Um, body fat percentage do you get down to for show do you think i think it's hard to say I, i think I wasn't actually very happy with my conditioning. I mm. think it worked in my favor because at a natural show, it's a case of, because tr- you're natural, you're trying to balance being lean, but also staying full yeah. and staying big. Because a lot of guys get super shredded and then they just like tighten yeah, yeah, up yeah. and they just can't keep getting the muscles out. So I think I balanced it well. Um, I was actually quite disappointed with my conditioning. I wanted to be leaner, yeah. but I probably sat around lowest 
six percent. Yeah, well, maybe five point five. And what are you normally at? Oh, healthily, the best range to be is ten to fifteen percent. Yeah. Uh, like if you're trying to. What, what are you normally at though? Because you're you normally are like floating at pretty low body fat percentage. Yeah, I can I can maintain comfortably around eight percent before I'm like I got to start actually trying. Yeah. Um, but I'm planning to go to fifteen percent for the next hopefully two years. But we'll see if I can even get there because yeah. fifteen percent is hard for me to get to. Okay, and um, like, do you guys have any hacks for like low calorie? like cravings things. Uh, lots of questions like if you're actually trying to cut for summer or something what is like your go-to technique for cravings uh i i'm probably a bad person to ask i was pretty bad with cravings i love my food mm. um i think the one thing that saved my life was greek yogurt and protein powder okay when you're deep in prep that tastes like uh like and you freeze it put it in the freezer turns yeah. into like the most depressing ice cream ever but it's still <laughs> like ice cream i and think that, I got, that for um, me is amazing the Yopro sent down like 58 tubs of yogurt in there and I think I've got some for us in there. So we'll, we'll knock that down yeah. after this because oh. we're going to go train after this. So that'll yeah. be good fun. Yeah, it will be. Maybe you're the person to talk to about cravings. Like what do you do? Because sometimes I swear even when I'm cutting on 2,500 calories. I get, yeah, I get cravings. I get when hungry. I'm, I, get, I get cravings when I'm bulking. Yeah. It's not <laughs> I know. I feel like I would struggle so much on a, on a comp prep. Like how would you deal with the cravings? So the easiest way that I dealt with it was doing it my cuts are really slow yeah. if i'm trying to get down to the lowest i can i'm gonna slowly increment to, like i usually start with just having rice in my diet and that kept me full but each week i'd remove like 50 grams from each meal mm. um but the best way that i dealt with my cravings unfortunately was pepsi max it's not great for your gut microbiome it's mm. probably a bad habit to have but i was guzzling maybe three liters sometimes yeah. every day uh, oh, on yeah. prep you do what you have yeah. to like everything's bad for your gut but apparently it's xanthan gum that's a big one yeah, yeah. but that just, just messes sweeteners with as well yeah. i remember i was making like oatmeal um when i got some carbs and i just pumped like 10 to 15 grams of uh you know like sweetener in there and yeah. it's just a treat it's but not good for you i think um yeah, but bodybuilding in general isn't good yeah, for you. Also, yeah with cravings yeah. so when you're cutting and you don't really have like all your goal is a weight like that's your only goal it cravings it's really hard but when yeah. your goal is a bodybuilding show you don't want to step on stage and embarrass yourself and be yeah. sitting at 15 percent body fat yeah. like you want to be stage ready so i think that in itself is enough for you to go like cravings yeah of course you're gonna have them but you can yeah, push them you don't aside be a because fat it's like loser on stage. Yeah. And some yeah. some people are. Yeah, well that's <laughs> why you losers, freaking got your pro I think card a lot at twenty one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think it's just when you're so driven for something, you would do literally anything. And like yeah. one the closer you get to the show, you would think the cravings get worse and they somewhat do, but it also gets easier to be like, I'm so close. I, yeah, I feel like I really want to set a goal now. I feel like I haven't had a goal in a while that I really want to like attack and dedicate myself to because I think that's when I get the most out of myself, whether yeah. it be a powerlifting goal or and Something like on that. that as well, I think that's the hard part post bodybuilding is yeah, there's a lot of post bodybuilding show like depression because you're uh, you have this massive goal and you achieve it. Now you're like, now what? Yeah. What yeah. do I do? Like I'm so lost. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's good that we're, you know, pumping out content at the moment because that's kind of the goal right now. But um, yeah, I mean the show, you got to do it. You gotta do it. I'm, I'm excited. You guys have me really keen. Yeah. After seeing your preps, James English's preps, obviously C bum. Mm. I'm keen. I want to cut to a mailbag because obviously we've had some really good questions from some of our fans, like to do with all the bodybuilding nutrition stuff. But first, we do have to keep a roof over our head. 2.0. Uh, we do have a couple of reads, the sponsors of the show. The first one is Whoop. Who are we? We are incredibly privileged to be sponsored by. Um, do you guys know much about Whoop? I don't actually. I want to know more. Yeah, they're like some of the best health metrics you can get. I wear mine 24-7 every single day. Uh, and essentially uh, what it does is it tracks like your heart rate to incredible accuracy and gives you all sorts of analytics with that. And it will tell you your recovery. A lot of it's based on heart rate variability. So if I go out and have two beers, it will tell me I'm better off just not existing because my recovery <laughs> is in the absolute gutter. Uh, so it keeps you really accountable on that front. And it... Uh, like the sleep metric i'm big on tracking my sleep mm. it'll track your sleep quality to an absolute t so if you guys want to get a whoop uh did you have a question on it sorry i was gonna say i would have loved to have that during prep uh it, I, I think i would have probably hated myself but it'd be interesting to see how heart rate data actually fluctuates throughout prep i don't mm. know if it would make much of a difference but if you guys do want to get a whoop uh you can click on the link in my bio or louis bio but because louis not on today's episode you should just click on mine to be honest i think i've had like over 100 people sign up through whoop 
on my referral, which is insane. So thank you guys. Big investment people, into yourself. It's a lot of people tracking their sleep. Exactly right. So thank you guys. The next one we have is Manscaped. Now, mate, to avoid some of your ingrown hairs, I don't actually use a razor, okay? Because yeah. I think the razor gets you ingrown. I don't know what you think. Oh, I'm te- I get the worst. I, I, I just use the, the Manscaped lawnmower 4.0 on my That's legs. That's actually what I did mm. for this, this season because I cut out. I was so scared yeah. to actually shave myself again. I use the Manscaped for my legs. I don't know if there's like a real aesthetically significant difference between the razor finish and the trimmer finish do you think it's a huge difference i think the only difference would be like when you have tan it can kind of like you can see little hair follicles but to be honest when you're having a one you're not mm. going to see it especially with the manscaped yeah mm, i think anything looks better up yeah. on stage and having hairy legs so yeah, yeah. you don't really both do the trick does anyways. everyone shave their legs on stage yeah. Yeah. yeah, you pretty much shave every part You're of your a body. Armpits, yeah. back, have, shoulders, everything. Have you guys ever used any Manscaped products or just me here? I haven't. I love them. I'll show you guys my arsenal. It's really good. <laughs> um, but if you guys want anything from Manscaped, it is absolutely essential for all men to be on it. Use code NTF. You'll get, uh, what is it, 20% off on free shipping and you'll be a good bloke for supporting us. Hmm? I have a question. You guys didn't drink any alcohol for your entire preps? Sort of. A little bit? A little bit. I okay. work in a bar. You work in a bar. Yeah, so I work in a whiskey bar in Newcastle and I have to make cocktails every night. I'm shaking cocktails and in order to make them good, you have to kind of taste them. Taste a little bit. Yeah, and especially being lean and death mode as I was, you'd have a tiny sip every 10 minutes to try the cocktail. Eventually, you probably had maybe one or two standard drinks. In that night? In that night. Okay, that's not that significant. That's enough to really destroy me. And I'm like walking around the next day going, oh my God. Really? It's so bad. Well, I'm a big heavyweight. I need bloody 30 drinks to even feel something, (laughs) mate. You know me. Yeah. What about you? You didn't drink at all. Yeah, no, I I, I was off it. Um, I was just like, you feel like on prep, like sure, one drink probably wouldn't make a difference. But Mm. you kind of, you're in that mindset where you think it will. And you're yeah. like, if I even eat this like one grant, like one little nibble of chocolate, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and be fat. And that's kind of the mindset you're in. So I think it's also accountability. Mm. You start drinking, you start doing these things, having little bites of stuff and like, you don't, just you don't up. stop. You don't yeah. stop. And like, yeah, if you're not holding yourself accountable in something like alcohol, which is, you know, it shouldn't be a big part of your um, life on prep. Like it should be pretty easy to cut out. But yeah, and also, I suppose you can, I don't know if it's a healthy mindset, but you can always look forward to, like, yeah. after a successful show, like, 100%. getting your pro card, you can look forward to a good night with the lads. Exactly, but then you get real drunk real yeah. quick. Yeah. I learned that on Saturday. Well, it's a cheap it's night. Rough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think you'd rather that than need 58 drinks to actually Oh, feel for anything. sure. It's a rough next day, though. Uh, I'm going to look through some of my questions to see um, if we have anything worthwhile. Um, so, we have a question from Hamish here. Question... For both of them. Lol, by the way, my name is Hamish James yeah. Wade. Yeah. How whack is That's that? Kind of whack, yeah. He goes, anyway, just want to know if they have any mental hacks or cheats on dieting and how they stick to a diet. So we've kind of already spoken a little bit about this, but do you have anything that's like your go-to like to stick to a diet? Find foods that you love and eat them every day. Like I, I'm a fiend for pancakes. Yeah. And I had to really manipulate them the way I cook them in order for them to have the correct macros. But by having that in the morning, it just started my day off right. Yeah. And when you start the day off right, you can get for your training, you can stay motivated and you won't cheat on your diet. You're going to have times where you do cheat, but if you can stay consistent six days, five to seven, five out of the seven days of the week, you're winning. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, I have a question from Max here. Question for all, what motivated slash push you to be where you're at in fitness and life at this point? Did you have something in particular that was like, fuck it, I'm going to flick the switch now? Um, yeah i think for me it was just like i've always been competitive i did track and field in high school and that yeah. was where i thought my life was what going. events i was a long jumper there you go so i sprinted as well but long jump and high jump but mm-hmm. everyone else kept growing and i yeah. kind of stopped at five nine so that died out quick but yeah i've always been competitive and i think when it came to fitness i was like i need something like you know i need a bit of hunger i need something to compete for and that's kind of where that love came from but i think also just in my fitness journey i i just i love inspiring people and i think it's i think it's a sick thing to be able yeah, to yeah. you know look at someone that's bigger than you look at someone that's like really fit and healthy and be like i want to be like that yeah so i wanted to be that for other people as did well did you have something that flicked the switch for you yeah when i was 19 i broke my jaw and yeah. um i had three months where i couldn't eat anything wow. and i was i was pretty lost and i couldn't be the person i wanted to be as a result and then lockdown hit and when it's this deep dark depression of really just liking myself mm. but i discovered that I wasn't, I wasn't that consistent with my training. 
but each day I slowly got more and more into it. And the more I ate, the more I trained, the more I loved it. And I created this one strange goal. is like, I want to go for it once in my life. Mm-hmm. I want to see if I can... I saw people like you. I see people like Louis. And I was like, what if I could be like that? Yeah. So I made these outlandish goals. And then when that uni project came up, I was like, let's, let's just send it. Yeah. I ate as much food as I could before. Got to about 84 kilos. And dealt with all my issues with my face and all my body dysmorphia and went, let's do it. And started shredding. And every day, as a result, got better with my body dysmorphia because I saw myself getting better. Yeah. But I now look back on that time when I did break my jaw as my low point as I'm glad it happened because without it, I wouldn't be the person I am mm. today. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think we all had our little villain arcs or whatever it is. you have to. I think yeah. your villain arc makes you the hero. Definitely. Mm. Did you get any good questions on your Instagram if you want to we'll look through? Look. I got one question here from... Christian, I'm a year 12 student currently, only a few months away from my big exam and eventually university. My biggest issue is actually motivating myself to get work done. I randomly get spurts of motivation and get a bunch of work done where other days I just lay down and do nothing. Any tips to stay focused and concentrate for these last few months? I, I can start and just, I think that you should never be relying on motivation. Mm. It's like they discipline. say, discipline over motivation. Mm-hmm. I think right. motivation um, is helpful, but motivation will motivate you in short stints yeah. and when you want it to be. But if you don't have discipline, you're just going to, you're going to be motivated from like a TikTok video and then two hours later, you're going to be lying in your bed going, I don't want to do a thing. Yeah, yeah literally. So I think um, you got to find, you got to find something like a goal. You know? Yeah. I think that's the best thing. Set a goal, um, whether it be, you know, doing, achieving a certain level or yeah. having something past your uni things that you want to do you know just setting goals will keep you accountable get you disciplined and yeah. um, motivation should come naturally through yeah. achieving your goals definitely um, but you want to find no- motivation for yourself not through other people or yeah. through you know I think short term goals are like pretty pretty hacks like yeah. if you create a goal within two weeks to achieve such as buying a bike like I had this massive goal for ages I wanted to get a nice bike so I could start training for triathlons Saving up at work made me be able to achieve that. Mm-hmm. And as a result, I then started, the next goal was, okay, I want to sign up for my first triathlon. I've got six weeks. Go for that, push for it. And each time I made these little goals, the, the ambition got higher and higher. Yep. And then all of a sudden you're going for, oh, now I want to do an Ironman, but I've got to work for that. Like just create small time goals that, will, that can be achievable so it doesn't mm. keep you like, what's the word like? You know, overwhelmed. Yeah, overwhelmed. Yeah. 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 Do yeah. you have a question there? I got Alec asking how many cows are in avocado toast. <laughs> um. Well, I I got lots of comments saying it's just wildly overestimated. But mate, I think we've all got a, a, an ample amount of experience in mm. tracking. I'm actually on a new app now. I'm tracking micronutrients too. Mm. Uh, so I'm taking it to the next level. Do you think? Do you think that gets your head going a bit though? Like making sure every sort of meal has good. Micro no, it's, and it's, macro. no, it doesn't have to be every single meal. It's more like a holistic approach. Like, you know, five out of seven days, just make sure there's no deficiencies in your micronutrient intake because they're yeah. important. And it's not hard to get your daily intake of micronutrients in once you understand. So mm. that's I, my viewpoint. Yeah, I do have a good question. Um, I don't know, say his name, Wex Erner. I think that's how you say it. He goes, uh, we kind of talked about it, but can you remember a definitive first step that kind of led you to pursue fitness and where you're at now? So the very first moment where you're like, okay, I'm, I'm doing this. Like, um, For me, it was never like one big thing. It was all yeah. just little things slowly scaling it up. Like I didn't just go uni student to full-time influencer like yeah. that. It was yeah. just like progressively lots of little things. It was yeah. like, I didn't take a massive risk and like quit my job and stop doing uni or whatever yeah. to do it. It was like a calculated thing for me. Yeah, I think I think for me, I like, I had my biggest, well, I'm having my biggest growth spike with social media now, which is mm-hmm. awesome. And I'm very appreciative of it. I'm trying to pump out as much content as possible and ride the wave. But I've actually been posting content since when Alex Eubank was at like 10K followers. Yeah. Um, uh, like end of 2020, start of mm-hmm. 2021. And I've been doing it for a long time. I was never really committed and I never really wanted to do it, but I just did it for fun. And eventually I had some people that were just like, you know, um, got inspired by it or would message me nice things. And I think over time that kind of built up to me being like, oh, you know, I I, I could do this, you know? Um, But yeah, I'm the same as you. I don't think I really had a definitive point. I think I just did what I loved in life. And I found out that at a certain point, people enjoyed seeing that. And that's the best way to go about it. Because you have, 
a lot of young guys that are trying to make content. They're trying to make viral content. They want to be. Yeah. Big, they want to be big now. They're not being yeah. It's like just you have to be yourself. You yeah, have to I post agree. what Otherwise you want it's not to sustainable. post. Sustainable. Yeah. And if people don't like that, you know, because it's if, unfortunate. But if you're just trying to pop off to like a trend, like you're not actually like people will like the video for the trend, but they won't like you. Yeah. You're just like a vessel for that, and I don't think that has any impact. But fellas, I can we go hit a session now? Absolutely. We're doing a. A back end bicep. Day. So we're going to take you through a bodybuilding workout and get you some posing and I'm going to start your prep. <laughs> we'll film some content. The content might already be out. Um, yeah. And yeah, it'll be three jacked men lifting weight. So oh, hopefully, forward my, to that, guys. hopefully my pre is still kicking at that point. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks <laughs> so, so much for jumping on. If Thanks people no, want to find you, to where can they find you? Uh, um, so I am at Kalani Lenahan. If you can spell that, I applaud you. But it's K-A-L-A-N-I. On Instagram, TikTok, I'm Kalani James. Um, they're my two main platforms. I'm getting YouTube stuff out there, but they're my two pl- yep. main places you can yep. find me. Uh, you can find me on YouTube at Hamish James and uh, Instagram, Hamish James 141. Awesome. Thanks yeah. so much, guys. No, I appreciate it. Cheers. Thanks, James.